Well, what's up, everybody? My name is Nick the Name Tui. You might have seen me around a couple of the fan leagues, and here I am making my debut in Full Metal uh, Singles, I believe. Listen, I'm coming in here. I, I know what my fate is going to be. Josh and Dan are very, very good at this. So for the sake of time, this is me rolling over. Here's my belly. Uh, there's the white flag, and there goes the towel. So, Dan, Josh, good luck in the future. Hopefully I'll have a witty comment in there. Uh, you know, spice things up. But yeah, uh, let's have fun, guys. And how crazy would it be after all that if I actually won this thing? Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Dan Skip Allen. Everybody knows me out there. Um, you all know me. I'm not that great of a trivia player. Uh, I got lucky. Somebody dropped out. I got their spot. Uh, or you could call it I got unlucky because look who I'm going up against. Joshua Vasquez, Nick Tuig, these guys. You've seen them in classic. You've seen them around the block a few times. These guys are good, especially Josh. This guy is an absolute beast. Um, you know, hopefully my 40 years of watching movies will come into uh, hand here tonight, and maybe I'll get a couple questions right and maybe do better than I ha have done in the past. Um, you know, that's it. That's all I got for you. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Joshua Viper Basquiat is back here. It's my second match. Now, my first match, I lost on the very last question to my partner, Corey. Nothing to be ashamed about. It was a great match. No shame in losing to Corey. But I can't afford to go 0-2. So today I'm taking on Dan and Nick. It's their first match in Full Metal Singles. I know it's going to be a tough one. Both of those guys know a ton about movies, a ton about movie trivia. But I can't afford to go 0-2, guys. So unfortunately, you guys are probably going to have to wait to get your first win in another match because... I can't afford to lose tonight. Welcome, everybody, to a brand new episode of Full Metal Singles. That is right, everybody. We are deep into the first round of the rookie half of this tournament, the Tournament of Dreams in Full Metal Trivia. My name is Sandy the Sandman Robinson, and as, well, not as always as much anymore, but as I love him, you love him, and he's here with me tonight. Jeremy, the Adam Adams. Jeremy, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Sandy. I'm so glad to be back hosting with you. I know we've been kind of hosting with other people and filling in and crossing, but we're back. Uh, you know, my mind, we're the dream team of hosts, and we've got a dream team of great players duking it out in another crazy three-way here, and I'm really excited. Um, these are guys that have kind of been around a little bit, uh, some more than others, but we, we know them all from watching them here in the league. I think they all have something to prove, and I'm really excited for this match. I am too. This is one of the ones that I earmarked as one that I wanted to watch. And after, you know, hosting Josh's, or uh, sorry, you know, uh, uh, Joshua's, uh, <laughs> hosting Joshua's match when he uh, when he narrowly yeah. lost that match. I mean, this guy's got some skill. I mean, we've known Dan for years, and the sheer weight of knowledge on his brain, uh, if if he can put it all together and pull it out at the right time. Uh, there's there's not too many people that have seen as many movies as Dan has, and then you've got you know the name, it's like the, <laughs> it's like the beard, it's like you know the hat, it's Josh Vasquez, or it's Nick Tuig, <laughs> and you know what I, I just had a long day at work, guys, and you know what it's coming out here <laughs> right now. But you got Nick and you got Joshua and you got Dan, all three great competitors. They've all played well in in classic. It's going to be a pretty tight match, I think. I don't think anybody's going to run away with yeah. this one. Um, but once again, everything, everything about this match rolls into round number two and what they can. That's up. true. But I don't know. I, I, I want to get to see what these guys can do. What do you say we get some introductions and bring them into the ring and get them started? Let's do it. All right. Introducing first. With a record of O and O, it is. And he has a strength of Kevin Costner. I'm just going to say sports ball. It is Dan Skip Allen. Thanks, guys. Glad to be here. One of his opponents entering the ring with another record of 0 and 0. He has a strength of MCU movies. It is Nick the Name 2 -ing. And that is his name. You got it. Oh, got it. All right. <laughs> and entering this ring after just a narrow defeat in his first singles match with a record of 0 and 1 and a strength of Disney animated movies, we've got Josh the Viper 
Vasquez. Glad to be back. All right, guys, we are really happy to be there. Who is freaking honking? It's it's a uh, an alarm in my. <laughs> Bad time. It's not my car. <laughs> it's the neighbors. There we go. There we go. No, nah, it's still there. No, nope, uh, still gone. Or- All right, guys. We're glad to have you guys right here. Jeremy is going to read you the rules of round number uno. All right, guys. Pretty straightforward as always. Every competitor gets eight questions from eight different categories. For each question, they have 15 seconds to write the answer down. After time is done, they will show and say their answer. Correct answer is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. If somebody does get all eight questions correct, though, they will get a bonus question. And during the entire match, competitors will get a total of three repeats and one challenge. All right. Jeremy, I believe you said that you wanted to do odd yes. numbered movies. Four questions. All right, guys. Good luck. I have your first question, and tonight it's going to be in the category of biopics. And it is, the film I'm Not There is inspired by the life of what famous musician? Sometimes I think I'm not there. Oh, I feel like that quite often. I'm here, not there. (laughs) My my mark is not the best, guys. I'm just letting you know. I hope I'm as close as I can to the thing. Five, four... Three, two, and one. All right, we are going to start with Mr. Skip himself. Dan, what do you got? You guys see that Bob Dylan? We can see it. What do you got, Nick? I was going to say that, but I'm definitely not there. John Lennon. Oh. And how about Josh? Bob Dylan. And that Bob is Dylan is correct. Good job, guys. I thought of switch markers here. Let me just check. All right, I got a better marker this time. All right, there we go. All right, guys. Question number two comes in the category of drama. What country are the pirates from in Captain Phillips? Jeremy? Mm -hmm. I'm your captain now. I'm the captain now. (laughs) You can't tell me that, Sandy. It's me. (laughs) That's right. I may have spelled it wrong. I'm just giving you a heads up. Yeah, we'll be lenient. Sorry to interrupt. Unless it's Klingon. All yeah. right, guys. Five, <laughs> four, three, two. RJ's never going to live that down. One. Never. Pens down. Let's start with Nick. I'll be the first mate, and Dan, you can be the skipper. Somalia? And Josh. Somalia. And Dan. Somalia. And you Spelled did right, spell it wrong. It's right. That All is right. Three right. Good, Good job, job guys. guys. All right. Your third question, guys, is going to come in the category of sci-fi fantasy. And it is, in what fantasy film did Jeremy Irons play an evil mage named Profion? Guilty pleasure. I got to say, guilty pleasure. Guilty haven't seen, or maybe not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it wrong, but whatever. Five, four, life motto, Dan. (laughs) Two, and one. Pens down. We are going to start with Josh this time. Is it Dungeons and Dragons? Dan, what'd you have? Aragon. And Nick. Cloud Atlas. It and is Dungeons and Dragons. It is Dungeons Joshua and got Dragons. that one. Good job, Aragon, a great guess because Jeremy Irons is also in that, but he's yeah. not the villain in that one. Yeah. And the name? What the hell? Dude? Cloud. Cloud Atlas? Atlas? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a good guess. That was a good guess. All right, guys. Question number four comes in everybody's favorite category of comedy. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see some groans on this one. Gonna, I just know we're it. going to see some. <laughs> Who played Barney Rubble in the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas? Somebody actually looks pretty focused on this question. <laughs> 
I think I think this one is more a, a guilty pleasure for me. <laughs> we're we're trading off one question to the other. <laughs> <laughs> this is so incorrect. <laughs> Three, two, one. Pens down. I'm actually a fan of the first one and not this yeah. one. But we're going to skip over back to Dan. Dan, what'd you have? Well, I hope I got the right brother. Billy Baldwin. Oh. And Nick. <laughs> I said Dave Coulier from Full House. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and how about Josh? What'd you have? I don't know if this is really a comedy movie, but Stephen Baldwin. Stephen Baldwin. It, it is Stephen. Yes, it is Stephen. Dan that hurts, Dan. You were so close. Dan coming within six years. That's right. Billy six years. Yeah. Time, so. All right. We're halfway through round one, and your next category, guys, is in the category of classics. Audrey Hepburn plays a blind woman who is terrorized by intruders searching her apartment in what 1967 classic? Oh, man. I know this, too, and I just can't think of the name of it. Um, it's a really great movie. Have oh, you seen this one? Have you seen this one, Sandy? Oh, yeah. Oh, you need to check it out. It's really, really good. I'm not, I'm, you know, in all honesty, and I'm going to attach some heat for this in the, in the chat, I'm not a big Audrey Hepburn fan. You'll still like the movie, trust me. All right, I will. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hands down, I'm actually a bigger Catherine Hepburn fan. Eh, I agree. All right, let's go over to Nick, who was writing furiously. You said the word apartment in the question. I couldn't get out of my head. The apartment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and Josh. I'm pretty sure I made up this movie, The Intruders. And Dan. Uh, I, I probably made mine up too. Nightcaller. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's uh, it. Yeah. The the name of the film is Wait Until Dark. Dark. Oh, Wait oh, until oh. dark. Really good movie too. Really good. All right, guys. Question number six comes in the category of director. Who directed the films Used Cars, Romancing the Stone, and What Lies Beneath? It's a career that spanned a lot of years there and a lot of different genres, so it'll be interesting to see who this person turns out to be. Who could, who, you don't know, Sandy, it could be anybody. <laughs> We're in no way referencing something that happened off screen. Five, four, three. Repeat, repeat. Okay, repeat. That is Josh's first one. In the category of directors, who directed the films Used Cars, Romancing the Stone, and What Lies Beneath? I have no idea. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I just put. I feel like I don't say anything, Sandy, but I feel like you're a used cars guy. I feel like that movie would be up your alley. The minute you typed that in there, I was yep. <laughs> and then, then you, and then you absolutely <laughs> clarified it with the next one. So five, four, three, two. You use one more. All right. Please. Oh, okay. All right. In the category of directors, who directed the film? Used Cars, Romancing the Stone, and What Lies Beneath. Josh being being not stingy at all with those repeats, but it could help him in yeah. the end. Whatever gets you there. That's right. Okay, got to give you guys five, four, three... Two and a one, and we are going to start with Josh. I had the biggest mental fart until I finally got it. It was Robert Zemeckis. And Dan. Eric. I said Ivan Reitman. And Nick. Well, went to the camera. I said Mike Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert Zemeckis, Robert Zemeckis is, is, the, is, the, is the correct answer. answer. Yes. It is. All so, right, guys. You're. you're uh, with very proper grammar here, your penultimate question is in the category of recent releases. And it is. I'll only judge you a lot if anyone one misses this. What is the name of the Creed family cat that comes back to life in 2019's Pet Cemetery? 
You see, I'm a fan of Stephen King, so that's why I'm judging. It's not actually a reflection on the players at all. It's just me being me. Dan was on, <laughs> Dan was on that whiteboard like peanut butter on jelly. He was there fast. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that last one just killed the sun. Sorry, my friend. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, Ugh. and one. Pens down. Let's go to Dan. Dan, what'd you have? Church. And Nick. <laughs> uh, why not? I said Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and Josh. I said Elvis. Oh, I, I had no idea. Wow. Just to be the... Just to be the Stephen King purist, his name is actually Winston Churchill. That's Church for short. Church is right. Dan gets it correct. There we go. And we got our final question is in the category of plot summary. Name the following movie. A drifter discovers a pair of sunglasses that allow him to wake up to the fact that aliens have taken over the Earth. How bad? How bad? How bad do you want to high five now over that movie? <laughs> that sounds awesome. It is. It's as it's as awesome as it gets, and that's all we'll say. Five, four, three. It's so awesome. Two, really awesome. One. I, got, I think I got down. one. All right, Nick. Maybe I got one this round, guys. Men in Black 3. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Aliens and Sunglasses, Men in Black, of course. <laughs> all right, all right. And Dan. I got a uh, large attacks. Mm. All three of you are unfortunately incorrect. The awesome 80s movie that we are talking about is They Live with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Really? The John Carpenter classic. Yeah, I thought it was a zombie movie. I don't know why I thought. No, they're yeah, aliens. Yeah. They're, they're aliens, yeah. All right, everybody. We are back. And after that quick score calculation, we have a leader, and he is Josh Vasquez. He's got five points. Second place right on his heels is Dan with three. And bring it up the rear, but anything can happen in round number two. Nick with one big giant point and he got it early on in that round so it can only go up from here as far as i'm concerned <laughs> we're going to get right into it jeremy give him the rules for round number two please real quick i just want to point out we have had a match where somebody got uh, one point in round one and then won the match so there is precedent <laughs> all right <laughs> all right round two works like this guys the competitor in the lead chooses to go first second or third the player in second then chooses to go. Whoever goes first bets on red or black or white. The player in second immediately chooses their color after that, and the player in third takes the remaining color. The player spins the wheel. If they land on their color, they choose their category. If they land on an opponent's color, that opponent chooses their category. If the player lands on a named category, they can take that category, or they do have the option to spin again. They are forced to take what they spin the second time. Each category has four questions worth two points each. A player can go to multiple choice, knocking each question down to one point. If a player misses a question, the two opponents get a five second count to steal the answer. They must write down, show, and say their answer. Awesome. Uh, we gave the, ca the categories to the players before the match started, but we will run over them real quick right here for the players at home. All right, your categories in round two tonight, guys, are movie characters, Lawrence Fishburne, action movies, time travel movies, movies about food, Meryl Streep, movies that were formerly in our deep cuts round from last season, Roll Call, which is you'll get four actors and you have to name what movie all four of those actors were in, movie within a movie, so a movie's being made within the story of a film, and then the strength categories, which are Kevin Costner's sports ball for Dan, as Matt put in the file here, the Marvel Cinematic Universe for Nick, and Disney animated films for Joshua. Awesome. And the person in the lead right now is Josh. So Josh, you can choose to go first, second, or third. I will go first. All right. So All right. So choose your uh, color. Yeah. Red, white, or black? Red. Okay, 
So then, Dan, you get to choose uh, black or white. I will go with white. All right. And uh, then Dan, Dan, Nick... can choose, Dan can choose whether or not he wants to go second or third or not. Uh, yeah, we can go ahead and have, uh, choose that now. I want to go second. I All right. Go... Oh, yeah. That's... I would like to okay. go third, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So I have the wheel up here for Josh then. All right. So we'll get you on... We'll start from Disney Animation and we'll we'll spin from there. You Hopefully can you can kind of see this. And here we go. There it is. The spin is in, everybody. Look at that wheel go. What's it going to land on? Nobody knows. <laughs> We're going to know soon. It looks like it is. Ooh, it's kind of going toward black, oh. but not quite. We've landed on the former Deep Cuts questions. Nice. So these would have been the movies that were last. Oh, it looks like Josh wants to respin. All right. <laughs> Oh. And there we go. Second spin, wherever it lands this time. So many good movies. I sound like I'm in a casino. <laughs> Whatever it lands, you will get red, black. We'll see. Uh -oh. All right, looks like okay. we are landing on Kevin Costner sports films, Dan Strength. Uh -oh. Finnegan. So the, <laughs> don't you wish. All right. Uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll go ahead and take this one, Sandy. Oh, you're going to read the sports yeah. films? All right, cool. Oh, no, you can, read it. you can read it if you want. Okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. So remember, guys, it's going to be a hard five count at the end of a question ending. Um, so for stealing, if you go to multiple choice, we're going to give you the options again and go right after the options five, four, three, two, one. If, the, if there's right. a steal. Yeah, no, no, you don't no. have to do anything. He's no, just talking yeah. about steals. Yeah, you get oh, yeah. just for just for stealing. So make sure yeah. you're writing the answers down as the questions are being read and that means josh we are going into kevin costner sports movies there we go all right are you ready as ready as i'll ever be <laughs> all right perfect question number one what is the full name of costner's aging picture pitcher in for love of the game what's his full name Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A. Crash Davis. B. Billy Chapel. C. Jim White. Or D. Denny Davis. Davies. Crash Davis. A. That is unfortunately incorrect. A chance for a steal. Your options are A. Crash Davis. B. Billy Chapel. C. Jim White. Or D, Denny Davies. Five, four, three, two, one. Dan. B, Billy Chapel. And Nick. B? That is Both correct. The one point yeah, they stole on that one. <laughs> All right, good. Crash, on crash, Josh, Davis crash Davis. Different, different movie. <laughs> yep, that is I knew that was the name, so I said, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yep, it is. All right, guys, your second question, Josh, comes in this query. In draft day, which what actor played Costner's first draft pick, Vontae Mack? Love this book so much. Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A. Bo Callahan B. Daniel Kaluuya C. Michael B. Jordan or D. Chadwick Boseman D. Correct for one point and he is fantastic in that movie so go watch it. Is he, is he ever not fantastic? No, never. <laughs> All right, question number three. Working himself through this unfortunate category for himself. In Tin Cup, how many strokes did it take for Costner's character to sink his ball on the 18th hole of the U.S. Open in the final round? Well, you know what, Sandy? I think I'm going to go multiple choice. Yes, <laughs> you are. Your multiple choice options are A, 8, B, 12, B, 10, C, 12, D, 13. 
Can you repeat it one more time, Sandy? Oh, yeah. yeah. A, yeah. A, A, eight. Uh-huh. B, 10. C, 12. And D, 13. Well, I'm going to go with C. One point. This is terrible, though. <laughs> no, no, no. Watch the movie and you'll understand. It's great. Okay. All right, guys. Josh, your final question. Thank God. In McFarland, USA, where does Costner take his team to celebrate after they win their first state race? Great question. Multiple choice. Right. <laughs> Your multiple choice options are A, out for pizza, B, the beach, C, ice cream parlor, or D, theme park. A beautiful day at the beach. For one more point, works himself right through that category by going to multiple choice, only missing one, but that did cost him a steal for both players. But right now, still in the lead with eight big points. Good round on a category that he definitely didn't want. Up next, we've got Dan. All right. I've got the wheel up here for Dan. Unfortunately, your strength is not going to be on it, but uh, we'll see what else he can spin here. And there we go. Round and round. Good song by Rat. Ooh, this may, this might not be bad for him. Meryl Streep. I'm going to take Meryl Streep. Meryl All right. Streep. I will definitely read these questions. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right. Meryl Streep. Let me find that one for you. Okay. Your questions in Meryl Streep. Who plays Meryl Streep's daughter, Lola Johnson, in A Prairie Home Companion? Multiple choice. All right, is it A, Emma Stone, B, Amanda Bynes, C, Hilary Duff, or D, Lindsay Lohan? Amanda Bynes. That is incorrect, unfortunately. Again, the options are A, Emma Stone, B, Amanda Bynes, C, Hilary Duff, or D, Lindsay Lohan. I'll give you five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's go to Nick. Was it uh, Lizzie McGuire, uh, Hillary Duff? And Josh. D, Lindsay Lohan. It is Lindsay Lohan, yes. Back when she was actually in movies. <laughs> All right. Your second question. In August, Osage County, what type of cancer does Meryl Streep's character have? Brain cancer. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. So I uh, can't steel. can't give you a repeat. So five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, we'll see if these guys had anything on a steal. Let's go to Josh. Breast cancer. And Nick. Leukemia. Sorry, it's actually we would have accepted either oral cancer or mouth, mouth cancer. cancer. Yes. Of course. All right. Your third question. In what state do most of the events of the film Silkwood take place? Five, four, three, two, repeat or answer repeat. one. Okay, his first, uh, you got to repeat on that. Yep. In what U.S. state do most of the events of the film Silkwood take place? Well, choice. All right, is it A, Nebraska, B, Oklahoma, C, Alabama, or D, Utah? Wow, those weren't the ones I thought would come up. Um, could you repeat the choices? Yes, again? we'll get one free repeat on the multiple. A, Nebraska, B, Oklahoma, C, Alabama, or D, Utah? I'm going to go with Nebraska. 
unfortunately incorrect for the Steel Guys. A, Nebraska, B, Oklahoma, C, Alabama, or D, Utah? Let's go to Nick. I'm be shocked, but I'm not yep. sure. Utah. And Josh. Utah? It's actually Oklahoma. Yep. Uh, well, no, it's I just All right. because of August Osage County and that they wouldn't have two things. Uh, so apparently, yeah. <laughs> the, the, apparently so. All right, your last question. What director who is known for the horror genre directed Merrill in the film Music of the Heart? Oh, man, I have a guess, but I just some, I'm just like, should I do go with it? Should I just go with it? Um, he's up. I don't want him to. Um, I'm just going to go for it just for the hell of it because I need some points. I'm going to go John Carpenter. That is unfortunately incorrect. We will Five, give you guys four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Josh first. Wes Craven. And Nick. Sam Raimi. It is indeed Wes, Wes Craven. Craven but Carpenter four. and Raimi were on the multiple choice, so you guys were all in the in the right sphere there, obviously. All right. Well, with Dan's turn over, he did not score any points, but he worked us through way through that category. He didn't give up too much in the realm of steals, and he still has the one steal himself. And a second, another turn at the steel wheel because it is now Nick the Name's turn. All right, Nick, we're bringing up the wheel, so uh, you're probably not not too sad that Meryl Streep and Kevin Costner are off, and you've got all the rest of the options on the board, so here I love we food go. Movies. Big fan of food over here. <laughs> Gonna eat some food after this. Ooh, might be going toward a color, not quite. Oh, of course. I don't know. All right, they're... so we're going to get a free respin on that one. Huh? Oh, we okay. already did Kevin Costner. Oh, free. And there we go. So it's like landed on the space next to black every time so far. So <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, black. <laughs> oh, what do we got? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, look at that. We've landed on Disney, Disney animation, animation, which is another player's strength. Do you want so, to take that? I should take that. But there's really only one way I have a fighting chance in this. So let's spin again. <laughs> All right, here we go. Fortune <laughs> favors the brave, perhaps. Yeah. And we are spell Lawrence Ooh. I think it's, on, baby, stop. I think it's gonna keep going, oh, no. unfortunately. <laughs> all right, and you have landed on movie characters. Ugh, movie characters all within the end. So you want me to take this one too, Sandy? Yeah, you know what? Sure. All right. All right. Okay. Nick, your first question in the category of movie characters. Great. The character Simon Templar is better known as what? What? <laughs> you said Templar, and I thought, I th no, National Treasure. <laughs> Multiple choice, please. <laughs> All right. Is Simon Templar A, the Fugitive, B, the Rocketeer, mm -hmm. C, the Saint, or D, the Equalizer? The Rocketeer. That is unfortunately incorrect. Again, the options are A, the Fugitive, B, the Rocketeer, C, the Saint, and D, the Equalizer. All right, let's go to Dan. Dan, what'd you have? C. And Josh. C. That oh, is correct. correct. It is the Saint. Point All right. One letter off. Your second question. What Best Picture winner features the following characters? Great. Martini? Orderly Turkle, Chief, and Billy Bibbit. Talking about. You said a whole lot of gibberish to me, Jeremy. <laughs> Those are characters' names. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be shocked. Multiple choice, please. All right. Is it A, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, B, The Deer Hunter, C, The English Patient, or D, Dances with Wolves? seen one of these movies and I like it very much. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. That is correct for one right. point. Yes. All right. Your third question. This, ca this category kind of got in here a little bit after all. 
Disney's Aladdin and Great. Shakespeare's Othello both share a character with what name? Come on, man. <laughs> uh, Othello, huh? Okay. Well, there's no one named Othello in Aladdin, so I won't go with that. Hmm. Stuck between two, and I might just throw a, throw a guess out there. Five. Four. Abu. Three. That is incorrect, unfortunately. Uh, so for a two-point steal, five, four, three, two, and one. What do you guys got? What do you got, Dan? Uh, I probably got it wrong. I put Ophelia. Um, and Josh. I don't know. Jafar. Sorry, guys. It's actually Iago. I was right Iago the is, the, right. is the villain in Othello. Yes. <laughs> All right, your fourth and final question in characters. In the great comedy, sorry, little uh, little uh, opinion there. In the comedy Office Space, yeah. the two corporate consultants both share what first name? Oh, my God. Between two. Bob. For two points. Two points. Oh, Good pull. I was Bob Bob Bob. Bob. I didn't even want to think about it anymore. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back and we are headed into round three. I'm going to give you guys a quick score update. Right now, Josh is still in the lead with 12 big points, but he is followed and they are not mathematically eliminated and still have a chance to win this whole thing. Both Dan and Nick are tied with five points going into round three. Jeremy, tell them how it works, buddy. All right, guys, this is the player's choice round and it works like this. There will be three questions worth two, three, and five points. Each question will come from a different movie. There is no multiple choice available, but there's also no stealing from the other players. A wheel will be spun to determine the movie for each question. Players will have the option to respin only one time in round three, so do so wisely. If a movie is spun a second time for the same point value by a different player, it will be a technical respin. The player team behind, uh, the player behind, will start answering questions first. Once that player uh, ties or moves ahead of the other player, they'll get their first question. Each player will go back and forth answering the questions from their given movie until there are TKOs or until two players are mathematically eliminated. And the eight movies that are going to be in contention for tonight that all came from uh, choices made by all our great uh, players and fans in the league there. So everybody, that's why we call it player's choice. Everyone uh, put some movies in the pot, but these happen to be the ones that were selected. They are Baby Driver, Warrior, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Mandy, Walk the Line, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, The Born Identity, and Man on Fire. Those are all good movies. So how it's going to work now is both Nick and Dan are tied. Nick is the is the last, or he is the first per place person in a tie. So we're going to start with Dan first. Dan, are you ready for your first spin? All right, so for your two-point question, these are the movies. And we are, and again, you get one respin, but only for the entire round, so you can only use it once. And there we go. Spinning, spinning around. And it's going to land on, looks like, Man on Fire. Man on Fire. So would you like to take that? Um... I studied Man on Fire, but I don't feel comfortable, and I need to Again, get Again, just so you know, you if you use a respin now, you can't use it on the three or the five. Yeah. It's just a two-point question. But yeah. I need to get I need I need to get points. I need to get questions right. Um, I would prefer not to have Man okay. on Fire. All right. All right. Choice. We'll give you your, your one respin. And yeah. I know there we say, go. But I need the points right now. That's the number one point um, thing I need is points. Oh boy! Oh, it looks like we're gonna land on Mandy. Mandy. Oh. Nicholas Cage film. Mandy on fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Want me to go and read this? Yeah. Here, go ahead. Tini? All right. All right. In the film Mandy, which actor plays Red's friend Carruthers? Yeah, I mean, I saw Mandy last year, and I studied a little bit, but I can't. I couldn't tell you. Um, um, the name of the uh, person that plays Carruthers, so I definitely don't know the answer. All right. Uh, Five. Okay. Four. 
three, two, and one. All right, I'm sorry. So we're looking for the actor Bill Duke. Bill Duke played his friend. So now uh, we continue with you, Dan. You're not, you just got to get these last two. You don't have a respin. So this is going to be for your three point question. Whatever it lands on, you're going to get. Need something I know. Come on, give me something I know that I studied. Yes. And it yes. looks like we are going to land on Stay. Warrior. Yeah. It is staying on Warrior. All right. Your three-point question, Dan, in the film Warrior, I can find it real quick, is... All right. I don't know what that was. Okay. Your three-point question in the film Warrior, Dan. When Patty Conlon says, when I get sober, I hired a man to find... When I got sober, I hired a man to find you, Tommy responds, is that one of the 12 steps? Or does a guy like you, blank, blank? I need two words. Oh, man, I remember this. I remember this. God almighty, I remember this. I should know this. Um, does a guy like you, um, repeat. Okay. When Patty Conlon says, when I got sober, I hired a man to find you, Tommy responds, is that one of the 12 steps? Or does a guy like you blank blank? Uh, I'm gonna go with um, five. Give up. That is incorrect. I'm sorry. And with that, unfortunately, I believe Dan that has been eliminated. Mathematically is eliminated. The answer Bathroom. we're looking for, does does a guy like you get 24, 24. instead of 12? Yeah, I know, Dan. But no, you know what, Dan? Him. You really did. You, you had a pretty good uh, play there today, a pretty good round one. It just, those Meryl Street questions were a bit tough today, but I really think we saw something from you, and I really think in another match you go the other way. So yep. uh, we'll, we'll come back and talk to you again at the end, my friend, but we do have to continue. So we go to Nick now for his first spin. Yep. And... So it was Mandy that is off. All the other ones are available for your two-pointer. Sweet. Uh oh. No. I think it's going to say. Oh, yeah. It's going right. to say there. Another oh. respin. Technical respin. I'll try going the other way this time. There you go. There you go. Sorry, that's someone texted me. I don't know how to shut it off on my computer. Or is it me remembering a, an answer? Oh. I like when I baby driver. <laughs> We're landing on baby driver. I will take baby driver. All right. Damn. You want to read that for him, Zane? Not a guarantee, but I will take <laughs> I absolutely will read this question. All right, Nick, your first two point question in baby driver is What is the name of the character played by Jamie Foxx? Mm. Oh, shoot. Oh, I can see it. Five. Repeat. Okay. First one for Nick. What is the name of the character played by Jamie Foxx? God, I can picture it. Ah, uh, this sucks. Five. I hit you with another one. Do it again, please. Okay. <laughs> what is the name of the character played by Jamie Fox? For two points. I wish I could walk oh, you through. Look at that. <laughs> it is I wish I could walk you through my my brain process right now because I am astounded at myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just get you just got to be patient and your mind gets there. All right. So All we're right. going to your 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 uh, three question pointer. three, the three point question. Um, so for this one, Warrior is not going to be on. So all of the other ones are available. Great. 
<laughs> Not to play my hand, but Baby Driver was my best bet, and that was the two-pointer. So here we go. <laughs> uh, let's All right, this. and we are going to land on Man on Fire. We do gonna, still have one respin, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're we're All right. Okay. Again, to play my hand, I'm hoping for baby driver each turn, and it's still not, <laughs> not a good. Spot. It is on there. All right. <laughs> and well, here we uh, go. Well, looks like it's got man on fire on the mind. Oh no, that's walk, walk the, line. the line. You got walk the line. Tell the one I studied. All right. I'll go. You still got the sand yet? Yeah, yeah. We'll have you right for now. Walk the line. You got it. All right. Nick, your actual question, as soon as I can find it, is for three points. Complete the following quote. Now, I've asked you 40 different ways, and it's time you come up with a blank, blank. Looking for two words. Awful. This is the one with Dewey Cox, right? <laughs> uh, that's funny. Forty different ways to come up with. Oh crap! I forgot the quote. I'll use my last repeat. I forgot what yeah. you said. All right, that is your <laughs> last repeat. repeat, and the question is for three points. Complete the following quote. Now I've asked you forty different ways, and it's time you come up with a blank, blank. I know this is about Johnny Cash, right? You can tell me after the question because I'm not even 100% sure what movie we're talking about. Uh, right. Wedding Ring? Uh, that is unfortunately not correct. What we were looking for was, now I've asked you 40 different ways, and it's time you come up with a fresh answer. Fresh uh, answer, yes. And it is indeed about Johnny Cash. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, get your last spin here. It's all on the line. Uh, if, you, if you get if you get your five pointer, you will send it back to Joshua. Great. I'll and, save you some time. Oh wait, I don't and, wait. And uh, nobody nobody's gotten to the five yet, so all the movies are available. And oh, great. There we go. <laughs> I have no reason. Come on, baby driver. Easy like Sunday morning. And okay, not gonna get it, but that could be worse. <laughs> yeah, we have landed on the Rocky Horror Picture Show. All right, the Rocky Horror Picture Show for five points. To stay in the game is what color are the gloves Dr. Frank and Furter wears in the lab? Um, between two. Between, I'm always between two. Great game to all involved, regardless of my answer, white. And your winner by double technical knockout, Joshua the Viper Vasquez. Absolutely. Uh, we were looking for, Jeremy, why don't you tell them what we're looking for? What color were we looking for? Uh, the, very fitting for this character, the color was pink. That's what I think. That was the other one. <laughs> yeah. That was the other one. <laughs> All right. Well, that was that was that was an amazing match. Nobody gave it was a good one. Right to the end of it, just because the score was was out of reach does not mean that everybody didn't try their hardest. This was a hell of a match. We are going to go right now to our third place finisher, Dan. When he got Baby Driver on that first question, I could literally see you eating the inside of your mouth. Um, <laughs> you really wanted that question, those questions. Uh, but you know what? In both of your questions, especially in Warrior, I could see that it was right there on the tip of your brain. You just had a bit of a tough time pulling forward. How do you think about your overall performance today? And I can tell you this right now, you're absolutely in line next year to get a match in singles. So congratulations <laughs> for that. How do you feel? Well, I'll tell you what, I just want to congratulate my uh, two opponents, uh, Josh and Nick. They both played great. Uh, I knew coming into this match, it wasn't going to be easy. Um, when when Josh pulled Kevin Costner sports movies, I thought, okay, he's not going to know some of these. I'll get some steals. That'll raise my point total up. Uh, you know, missing a couple, Stephen Baldwin, Billy Baldwin. 
I mean, and you know, uh, the director question. I I know there was there was points left on the board by me, um, but I cannot take away anything from my two opponents. Both super good guys, super great opponents. And I just want to say congratulations to Josh moving forward. I think you're going to be a, 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 a very, very difficult opponent uh, for whoever you have to face moving forward. Um, I just want to say thank you to the writers. Thank you to the hosts. Thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody involved with uh, Full Metal Media. Um, I just appreciate this opportunity, and um, I love everybody involved. Um, I just uh, – things didn't roll my way tonight. Uh, the questions just didn't – you know, third round questions, and then Josh getting my 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 round two, and just things just didn't go my way. You know, and I try. I thought, oh, I'm going to wear my Notre Dame hat. I'm going to wear my green shirt. Maybe I'll get some luck. Uh, it didn't turn out that way tonight for me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this right now. I only have this visual aid for the baby driver question because my good friend Dan sent this to me. So thank you, yes. Dan. You're a hell of a guy and a hell of a friend and cannot wait to see what you guys got, got in store for us next season. But for now, let us go over to our second place finisher, the name himself, Nick Tuig. You got you got there. You got that first one right. And it, took, it. You, it took you a little while to, to scrape it up out of your, out of your brain. You got Come it on. in the end. And you know what? You just had some, you know, had some movies you weren't specifically that uh, that uh, that familiar on for your last two, but you played a pretty decent game. You got so you worked your way through round two, got a steal, got a two pointer in there. How do you feel about your overall performance, and what are you looking forward to next? Uh, my overall performance, Sandy, you said it best yourself. If anyone watched this drafting video and we talked about it off camera, there are days where I know everything, and there are many, many more days where I know absolutely nothing. Uh, we will let the crowd watching this decide which of these days that was, <laughs> but I think I have, a, have an idea. Um, as far as what's coming forward, uh, Josh, best of luck in the future. Um, I know you'll represent us well, and as long as you win, there's no way anyone can say I wouldn't have come in second. So please win. Um, and then as far as the future for me, I'd love to play in singles, but I've been wanting to say this for a little bit. Uh, to whoever needs to, listen, to hear this or to listen, I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, but the second you put me in Full Metal Geek is the day that that league uh, goes on notice. So right. put me in Geek. And I'll show you what I really got because there's a reason MCU was my strength and there's a reason I don't know anything else. Um, yeah. but best of luck to Josh and thank you everyone for, for being here and having me here. It's been a blast. I think uh, they're going to be doing some testing for new players before too long there because we're uh, in the middle of a tournament. Yeah. So you'll definitely have your chance there. Absolutely. And, and as, as the, one of the two hosts and both the hosts who have had number one contender matches and championship matches against the current Full Metal Geek champion, Robert Parker, you're going to have to come to us. <laughs> Absolutely. And finally, but definitely not least, it is the winner of this match and improving his record to one and one, like you said at the beginning of the match. It is Joshua, the Viper, who stung and stung and bit and slashed his way through this match just like he said he was going to. Josh, you had a pretty good round one. It got you in the lead fast. You, you, you worked your way through your round two, even if, though it wasn't a strength of yours, it was somebody else's. Uh, you multiple choice your way through it, and you didn't have to answer a question in round three. How are you feeling right now, and what are you looking forward to? Uh, well, first off, I just want to say great game uh, by Nick and Dan. Um, I feel like if a couple things went a couple different ways throughout the match, uh, it would have been, you know, I, I definitely would have had to answer some third round questions. Uh, and thanks to you two as well for hosting. Um, yeah, my strategy with the second round when I got Kevin Costner was basically to limit the amount of points Dan was going to steal from me um, and at least give myself a 25% chance to get it. Um, so that was really that. And then uh, with Meryl Streep, I just got lucky that I actually knew uh, some of those questions because I'm not a big uh, Meryl Streep uh, movie fanatic. So, uh, Luck plays a big part in this game. I've yeah. learned that. Uh, in my last match, I knew Corey's uh, five-pointer, and I missed mine. So things like that bother you, but um, Luck's a big part in it. So I'm, awesome. I'm happy. I'm happy, though. 
Well, you're moving into round number two, which will be starting up soon as this was, I think it's the second to last match. I mean, no, we, it's the third to last match. We have two more to cape after this. So uh, round one is coming to a close. Um, it's going to work exactly like the first round. You're going to get a, uh, uh, you're going to get randomly selected with somebody, but it is going to be a one-on-one -on -one match, not a one-on-three -on -three match. Is there anybody that was in that bracket that you might have been looking at going, you know what, I'd like to face that person in round number two. Wouldn't it be fun to play Corey again? Wouldn't, <laughs> that, that's a, that's wouldn't that be fun to study together and, and play against <laughs> each other again? That's uh, awesome. So <laughs> well, congratulations on your win today. Also, congratulations to our two other competitors today. Everybody played fantastic. We are awesome. Jeremy, final thoughts, man. How did you think that this match went? And I mean, you know, just what did you think overall? And, um, yeah. I, I think sometimes the points don't really reflect, you know, I, what, what these guys are really doing. Cause I think they've all shown, uh, good knowledge here today. Uh, there were moments like, uh, you know, obviously I think, you know, Dan would have, if he'd gotten Kevin Coster, he would have swept that would have been a very different game. So, uh, and, and Nick really showed, showed some things, especially pulling that bats at the end, you know, he took the time to do it, uh, played the game. I think these, all the, all these guys on any given day could win the match. It just went to Joshua today. And I think, you know, you know, it's easy to say that maybe he was due after that, that very close loss to Corey. So I think it's, it's only fair. He gets a second chance after that match to get himself through this tournament. So that'll be fun to see, but they're all great players. I, I really look forward to seeing these guys again, any, anywhere that we'll see them. And, and if Nick comes gunning for us and geek, that'll be something I'll be very excited to see. Cause uh, yeah, there's a, that is some of the toughest competition over there and some of the, the, the best fights I know you and I both have had. So that would be awesome to see. Well, you're hundred percent right on that. Well, that is going to do it for us in this installment of Full Metal Singles Tournament Edition. The Tournament of Dreams is well underway. We're going to get this thing finished up just before Snowball and then have our championship match with the winner of this tournament, who could be anybody, somebody from the rookie side, as you saw today, somebody from the vet side, which we're going to be starting up really quickly. It can be anybody. I want to take a minute to thank all of our fans out there, everybody who watches and supports the Full Metal Trivia brand, all the writers, all the editors, all the hosts, all the players, too. It takes it doesn't just take our time to do this. It takes their time as well, and we appreciate that. Thank you very much on behalf of Full Metal Trivia. And for my partner, Jeremy the Adam Adams, I'm Sandy the Sandman Robinson. And as always, have fun, watch movies.